The unmistakable whir of a Formula E car is one of the most distinctive sounds in sports. It is far from the usual roar on a racetrack. What a move from the British driver! But what Formula E lacks in volume, it makes up for in intensity. Bam! And everything has to be built in a very coordinated way. So it's like a huge kind of ballet. The man in charge of Formula E is Alejandro Agar. Is there an instruction manual here? Or? There is, <laughs> yeah. We first met him in England in 2014. Well, here we are, five years later. Yeah. <laughs> we're still alive, we're still here. <laughs> I mean, think about that. Well, I didn't even know the cars were gonna work. I remember when you were there with us at the first ever test. <laughs> Only 10 cars on the grid on a kind of test that to see if the thing was gonna, was gonna even move. And here we are five years later in New York and it's probably the fastest growing motorsport in the world. Many people thought you were gonna fail. Yeah, everyone thought we were gonna fail. <laughs> I think only I thought maybe we had a chance. Formula E races are short, only about 45 minutes, and take place on tight tracks in city centers. Speeds can hit 175 miles an hour. Contrast that to Formula One, the most popular racing league in the world. These classic combustion engines race on wider, far longer courses, and are still far more powerful. But Jean-Éric Verne, who once drove Formula One and is now Formula E's top-rated driver, says it's not so simple. Frankly, I'm more scared in a qualifying lap in Formula E than I was in Formula One. And there goes Van! Yeah, because, you know, the track is so narrow. It is a heavy car, very difficult to brake. The handling is, is not as, as good as in F1, so therefore it makes the driving a lot more difficult and mistakes happen uh, a lot quicker. Van just too late on the brakes. He had nowhere to go. Andre Loderer is Vern's teammate. He showed us inside a Formula E vehicle. The battery takes the engine space, so the battery is inside this uh, safety shell. It's pretty impressive. Each costs about a million dollars and weighs 1,500 pounds. More than half that is battery weight. You have to look at Formula E like almost like uh, we're at the beginning of a new chapter in automobile industry in racing. In previous seasons, drivers had to switch cars because batteries couldn't last the whole race. This year, that is no longer the case. Battery power has improved dramatically. The logistics of moving those batteries and everything else from city to city is mind boggling. In Brooklyn, nearly 700 people have been working nonstop this week to build a track from scratch. The cars were unpacked on Wednesday. Testing was Friday racing on Saturday and Sunday. The whole event will cost Formula E between 10 and 15 million dollars. A week we build everything and in four days we, we dismount everything. So it's a huge operation. But is it all worth it? Agog says investing in the future and losing money for now is, as his league aims to become not just the number one electric race series, but the number one race series, period. Straight into the wall and out of the race. It's tricky though because both Formula One and Formula E are regulated by the same organization. An older brother and younger sibling battling for attention. There's no other way to say it. I mean, it's, it's a contentious relationship. Has it gotten any better, do you think? I think, or worse? I mean, I don't have any problem with Formula One. Um, I love Formula One, I think it's great. But obviously, as the industry shifts towards electric, Formula One finds more and more itself without an industry to relate to. So Formula One goes away? I don't know. How long does all this take? Are we talking about five years from now, 20 years from now? I think we're talking 10 years from now. This was seen by a lot of people when it started as, as a novelty. Right. right. Is it still a novelty? It's not still a novelty to manufacturers. Travis Okolsky is the editor-in-chief of Road and Track. I mean, it's interesting to think about because they've been around for five years, but it's still in its infancy. Right, well, you've got to think about Formula One has been around since 1950, right? We've got seven, almost 70 years of history with this one sport to develop to become the pinnacle of motorsport. Formula E comes in with new technology and it's their first time trying to make an impression. It's going to take time to become the pinnacle of motorsport. If it does. Right, that's a big if. Formula E has developed gimmicks that purists scoff at. And Senna uses his fan boost. A fan boost, which lets users on social media give their favorites more juice. This year, attack mode, which lets drivers get more power by steering through a special zone. Not unlike in the video game Mario Kart. We have to move even more towards the video game. We're not halfway there yet. So the future is electric and it's video games. 
the future is electric and it's a combination between real life and video games. Combination between, between real and virtual. That's the future. For an American audience watching this weekend, what do you think they'll take away? We try to um, go to the American public and show them electric cars. I think if you see this race, you're one step closer to buy an electric car. That's why we do it. And uh, that's why people coming here, and we get more and more people coming again and again here in Brooklyn, they will feel closer to buy an electric car. That's our objective.